want to thank our witness here. Uh, it's been a good hearing. A lot of information has been learned, um, particularly on the issue of how this is impacting our kids. I think we're going to look back 20 years from now, and all of us are going to be like, what in the hell were we thinking when we recognize the damage that it's done to a generation of kids? Do you agree with that, Ms. Hugan? Uh, when Facebook made statement, has made statements in the past about how much benefit Instagram is providing to kids' mental health, like kids are connecting who were once alone, uh, what I'm so surprised about that is if, if Instagram is such a positive force, what, have, we, have we seen a golden age of teenage mental health in the last 10 years? Yeah. No, we've seen We've seen the opposite, right? We've seen escalating rates of suicide and depression amongst teenagers. Do you think yeah. those rates are at least in part driven by the social media phenomenon? There is a broad swath of research that supports the idea that usage of social media uh, amplifies the risk for these mental health harms. So right now, and this hearing is helping illuminate it, yeah. we are seeing... And Facebook's this, own research shows that. Right? Yeah. It, say that again, that's I said, important. And Facebook's own research shows that. Right? That kids are saying, kids are saying, I am unhappy when I use Instagram and I can't stop. That if I leave, I'm afraid I'll be ostracized. Right. And that's, that's so sad. So they know that. That's what their research shows. So what do you think drives them to... I had this discussion with the witness last week, no. and I said, well, you know, I think they called it their time out or stop. I said, but isn't that incompatible with your business model? Because your business model is more time online, more eyeballs online. Isn't that the fundamental elements of their business model? Facebook has had both an, an interesting opportunity and a hard challenge from being a closed system. So they have had the opportunity to hide their problems. And like often people do when they can hide their problems, they get in over their heads. And I think Facebook needs an opportunity to have Congress step in and say, guess what? You don't have to struggle by yourself anymore. You don't have to hide these things from us. You don't have to pretend they're not problems. You can declare moral bankruptcy, and we can figure out how to fix these things together. Because we solve problems together, we don't solve them alone. And by moral bankruptcy, one of the things that I appreciate the phrase that the chairman and you have been using is one of those elements which is they know this is a problem, they know it's actually impacting negatively the mental health of the most precious assets we have in America, mm. our youth, our kids. Mm -hmm. I have three daughters. Mm. Um, they know that that is happening, and yet the moral bankruptcy, from your perspective, is the, continued, the continuation of this simply because that's how they make money? I, I phrase it slightly differently. We have financial bankruptcy because we value people's lives more than we value money, right? The people get in over their heads and they need a process where they admit they did something wrong, but we have a mechanism where we forgive them and we, we have a way for them to move forward. Facebook is stuck in a feedback loop that they cannot get out of. They have been hiding this information because they feel trapped, right? Like they would, would have come forward if they had solutions to these things. They need to admit they did something wrong and that they need help to solve these problems. And that's what moral bankruptcy is. Let me ask, I'm going to switch gears yeah. here, and, and this is, uh, you, what's your current position right now in terms of its disinformation and counterespionage? Um, I, my last role at Facebook was in counterespionage. I'm sorry, your last yeah. role. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So one of the things, this is a very different topic, and um, I only got a minute or so left, but... Right now, is Facebook, I know Facebook is not allowed in countries like China, but do they provide platforms for authoritarian or terrorist-based leaders like the Ayatollahs in Iran, that's the largest state sponsor of terrorism in the world, um, or the Taliban, mm. or Xi Jinping, our certain, my view, our biggest rival for this century, a communist party dictator who's trying to export his authoritarian model around the world. Do they provide a platform for those kind of um, leaders who, in my view, clearly don't hold America's interests uh, in mind? Does Facebook provide um, that platform? I, I, during my time working with uh, the Threat Intelligence Org, so I was yeah. a product manager supporting the threat, uh, the counter espionage team. Um, my team directly worked on uh, tracking Chinese participation on the platform, surveilling, say, Uyghur populations uh, in places around the world. 
that you could actually find the Chinese based on them doing these kinds of things. So Facebook, um, yeah. oh, I'm sorry. Um, we also saw um, active participation of, uh, say, the Iran government doing espionage on other um, state actors. Um, so this is definitely a thing that is happening, and I believe Facebook's consistent understaffing of the counter-espionage, information operations, and counter-terrorism teams is a national security issue, and I'm speaking to other parts of Congress about that. So you are saying, in essence, that the, the, the platform, whether Facebook knows it or not, is being utilized by some of our adversaries in a way that helps yeah. push and promote their interests at the expense of America's? Yes, Facebook's so very aware that this is happening on the platform. And I believe the fact that Congress doesn't get a report of exactly how many people are working on these things internally is, is unacceptable because you have a right to keep the American people safe. Great. Thank you very much.